Guys, I've got a cool video for you today. It is all about getting a metal tone. I'm actually gonna share my personal settings with you that I use right now today with both plugins, with both virtual amps and with a real amp. We're gonna dig into both settings. I've got some sound clips that you're gonna hear. Now, real quick before we get started, I've got a free PDF document that you can download. Uh, actually, if you're on my email list already, you already have this. I just emailed it to you. Uh, just look for the subject metal tone anything that says metal tone on it and of course from Jason Stallworth if you're not on my email then sign up below in the YouTube description uh, you'll get my free metal riffs and licks guide that's my free practice guide you'll get that today as soon as you sign up and then the next day you'll get the email for my metal tones that I'm talking about now let's first go over the perspective of using virtual amps plugins so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna share uh, probably one of my favorite plugins I guess and this is by positive grid this is using the bias amp plugin that they have and I'm gonna share uh, a tone from you from an amp called their tread plate so let's listen to this I'm gonna share two tones with you I'm gonna share a tone that's by itself on its own then you're gonna turn around and hear it in the full mix because at the end of the day that's really what counts and then I'll break down the settings for you uh, of course after that we'll do the same thing with a real amp <laughs> Now let's hear what that tone sounded like in the full mix and of course I'll explain to you how I recorded this as well. Now I said same tone, but that's not entirely true. So what I do when I'm recording tones in the full mix, and we're gonna break down the EQ by the way. First things first, I recorded for the full mix two guitar tracks. I used the tone that you heard by itself, but I recorded a second guitar. I didn't duplicate that track. I actually went back and played another track and recorded that. What I like to do is when I record and I didn't tell you you're gonna get some recording tips here as well, but I always prefer to record two rhythm tracks when I'm doing the full mix. I'll hard pan one track to the left. Well, that's my right. I'll hard pan one track to the left, and then I'll record the other track and pan it to the right. Now, how I actually record, I'll, I'll record that first track you know, straight up the middle, then I'll pan it to the left. That first track you heard, I pan that to the left, after I recorded it. Now when I open up the new track to record my second guitar track, I'll go ahead and pan that to the right so that when I'm recording, whether I have headphones or, or through my studio monitors, I can hear that in stereo if that makes sense. And that, that actually helps your timing a little bit instead of having both tracks up the middle. That can sound a little, I don't know, just it's not pleasant, it sounds a little muddy, but when you pan the first one, put it in whatever speaker, doesn't matter, and then open up that new track and, and hard pan that the opposite way, you're going to have that in stereo feel and sound, and it's gonna help you not only sound better, your mix is gonna sound better, but will also help you with your timing as well. Now for this purpose, I just threw in a dummy drum track just using Easy Drummer. I just picked a basic double bass pattern, nothing special, it was just a loop, no, program, no programming or anything like that. Uh, I'm using Easy Drummer's Metal Machine pack for this and actually also have their death metal pack as well so lastly I recorded a bass guitar track as well now the plugin I use for that is by studio devil and it's called bass amp pro 
So that's a really awesome plugin. But I just wanted to share all that real quick with you so you know how I recorded everything. I almost forgot the software. I am using PreSonus Studio One Pro software. Now I won't cover all this stuff when we get to the real amp because I'm basically going to use everything except for the guitar tracks when we record this same uh, the same riff with a real amp and we'll go over those settings. All right, so now let's go over the settings that I used for the plugin for the bias amp, what's called the tread plate, which uh, that's modeled after the Mesa dual rectifier amplifier. For the full mix, these are my settings here. So I've got my bass right around the middle there. Sometimes I'll boost the bass just a little bit. Uh, sometimes I may cut it back. When you're recording for the full mix, you might find that you have to cut your bass back just a little, not too much. But the reason you do this is because you want your bass guitar and your kick drum to carry those bottom end frequencies, those lower frequencies. You don't want your guitar to carry that. That's gonna make your mix muddy. So this is kind of one of the secrets to getting a really nice mix. Now the beauty of using plugins is if you record the track with a little too much bass, well, you can just open up the plugin and <laughs> decrease that bass if you need to. Can't do that with a real amp, which we'll talk about that when we get to the real amp part here. Now my mids, I personally, and this is, this is a personal preference here, I like to cut my mids. I don't like to cut them too much. I usually cut them to around four-ish, sometimes like 3.7 to 4.2, something like that. My treble, I like that to be between six and seven. Um, a lot of times it depends on the specific amp sim that I'm using. You know, each amp sim and of course the cabs and mics, which we're gonna get to in a second here, you know, that's gonna, that's gonna make a difference in how you EQ the actual amp as well, because everything has to work together. Now the presence on amp sims, this greatly depends on the amp sim I'm using. You can see my presence here. Uh, but some amp sims, I may boost my presence a little, whereas other amp simulators, other virtual amps, I may cut the presence. I don't really use any extreme cuts or boost though. It will be anywhere between four and six, somewhere in that range, again, depending on the amp. Now, if we kind of take a step back, and I need to go over the gain with you as well, but if we take a step back and just look at the settings here, there is nothing extreme or, or too special about my settings, nothing, it's pretty simple. So I just kind of wanted to clarify that because a lot of people think they have to have these extreme settings and then they wonder why their tone's not good. I'm just not getting a good tone. And a lot of times people just have everything turned all the way up. What I always recommend is really just starting with the settings straight up and down and just make the subtle adjustments as you play. Now the gain, a lot of times the gain on a high gain amp sim, I will have it between six and seven for my rhythm track. And for the lead guitar track, I'll boost that a little bit, okay? Because uh, I want a little bit more saturation for my guitar solos. On that note, I don't really change anything for my guitar solos as far as EQ, except for my bottom end, my bass, I might boost it just a little bit because the leads can sound kind of thin if you don't have that bottom end. And the mids, I might boost the mids just a little as well. That kind of helps it cut through the mix. Now for what's probably the more important part of your metal tone, especially when it comes to using virtual amp sims. This is gonna be your speakers, of course your cabinet, and your mics and the mic placement. The blessing and the curse of using virtual amps is you've got a ton of options here. So a lot of times you can kind of freeze yourself because you're just going through different tones and testing and playing and moving stuff around that you don't really get anything done. And if your goal is just to use the amp sim, the virtual amp, to record an idea, I don't recommend spending a ton of time on that, which is why I'm giving you my settings and, and my setup here. And maybe you'll love my tone or maybe you, you won't like it, but at least it gives you kind of an idea. Like if you don't like it, okay, well, you know to just use completely different settings than what I'm sharing with you here. But I think it's at least a good starting point for you. So in this specific case for Positive Grid, uh, when I bought the Positive Grid, the Bias Amp package, I made sure to get the one that came with the Celestian speakers. Uh, and again, these impulse responses, and there's a lot of others out there as well uh, that are like standalone that you can use with plugins like Bias or, or STL tones or whatever. So there's a lot of options out there. I'm definitely not trying to sell you on Positive Grid. It's just something that I've been using for a very long time now and I'm used to it. But here I've got the Celestian speakers. I use a mix of the V30s here. And remember I said I record a second track. 
and I didn't mention this earlier, but I actually used a slightly different tone for that second guitar track. I typically do this when I'm recording because I want a little bit of, of differentiation between the two guitars, just a slight. So one guitar track, the first one you heard, I recorded it with the V30s, the Celestian V30s here, and I've got the SM57 mic. Uh, kind of close to to the speaker there to the grill there rather and I've kind of got it moved off to the side of the cone now for the second guitar track I recorded I actually used a different speaker I used the Celestian Greenbacks okay so I used those pretty much with the same mic placement there um, maybe it's it's moved over or closer to the cone, you know, slightly different. But again, it's not a substantial difference in tone, but it's enough to where I have a slightly different tone in that other speaker. If you use tones, and this is kind of going back to recording tips, I'm kind of doing an all-in-one with you here. If you use the exact same tone for both guitars, uh, it might sound a little thin or just a little, I, what I would encourage you to do is just change something slightly on that second guitar you record. Just make a slight change to that and I think you're going to find that's going to give you a, a better overall sound. Now you don't want to change it too much like use an entirely different amp. Not to say you can't, but then the tones might be too far apart from one another and it just might not mesh together too well. Now the thing I didn't cover quite yet were the effects to use with virtual plugins. So most virtual amps and, or suite of amps and effects, they will have some sort of overdrive. And of course, these, these virtual amps are set up to work just like a real amp where a lot of times you need that overdrive. And this is the typical settings here for overdrive. You know, the distortioner gains all the way down. Uh, some people turn their level all the way up. I, I put mine at about seven and I typically don't mess with the tone. I'm gonna get my tone from the amp itself, not from the pedal. And that just kind of cleans things up and tightens things up a little. Uh, of course, you more than likely will have to use a noise gate with most all virtual amps. Again, these are set up like real amps are set up to operate as closely to a real amp as possible. I typically don't use any effects after the amp or in the effects loop. I might use a little bit of reverb in some cases. For my leads, I'll use some delay. For my guitar solos, I do use some delay. Uh, also, when you record using plugins, I typically do not do any post processing after the fact because this signal is already processed enough just by using the virtual amp. Now for part two of Jason's Metal Tones and this is where we bring in the real amp. Now in this case I'm using my EVH5153. This is a tube amp. It's the EL34 tube version. It's a 50 watt head and I've got a matching 212 cabinet. Now I'll go over some of the other recording details once we hear the tones so let's get to that. I'll let you hear the guitar track by itself and then we'll listen to it in the full mix. Alright, so that was just the guitar track. Now let's hear what that sounds like in the full mix. Again, that's my EVH5153 EL34 tube amp, 50 watt head matching 212 cab. So let's talk about the EQ settings. So as we're going through these, you can see that they're not much different <laughs> from the settings I use for the virtual amps, okay? Uh, the bass, I've got it boosted just a little bit for the single track, okay? The first track that you heard here. Um, then for the mids, I've got them cut to about the same as, as I went over 
uh, for the virtual amps. I said about four there, a little, a little further back than that, probably 3.7, 3.8. My treble here is about 6.5, about six and a half. For this particular amp, I've got my presence boosted just a little, not quite to six, probably around 5.5 here. And my gain, since I'm recording at a little bit lower volume, I've got my gain between six and seven. I would say probably at about 6.5, maybe closer to seven. Uh, again, I didn't have the amp super cranked. This amp delivers a really great metal tone or, or tone in general without being cranked up. Of course, you're gonna get uh, you're gonna get those tubes a little bit hotter and it's gonna sound a little bit better as you increase the volume. But with this specific amp, you can get a really nice metal tone at a lower, I'd say at like a kind of a loud bedroom volume, if that makes sense. On that note, my volume was actually just a little bit past one here. It's about 1.5, so that's not very high. Uh, of course, you've got to turn up your, your interface level for your microphone to pick up enough signal. So that's just something you always want to monitor when you're recording your amp. If, you're, if you've got your amp cranked up, of course that, that level for your mic, that's gonna have to be decreased a little bit so that you don't peak. If you're recording at lower volumes, of course you're gonna have to increase the volume for the mic on your interface. Now to record this amp, let's start with the microphone I use. I use the good old Shure SM57. Uh, this mic is known for recording high gain amps and other loud sources. It just works. Now I always encourage you to to use different mics, especially if you're gonna be recording in the full mix using two guitar tracks. Remember what we talked about earlier? Well, I use the same method for recording a live amp as I do with plugins. I record two rhythm guitar tracks and I'll hard pan each one. Now, I just have the one mic, so I'll show you what I did here. For both tracks, I had the mic placed uh, very close to the grill, but for the first track, I had it a little closer to the cone, not in front of the cone, uh, but kind of just outside of that cone, the center cone of the speaker there. One thing to keep in mind, the closer you move the mic towards the cone, the brighter tone you're going to get. The further you move that mic away from the center of the cone, you're gonna get a little bit darker tone. So for the second guitar track that I recorded, I moved the mic just a little further, a little, a little bit more further away from that cone to have a little bit darker tone. What that did was it gave me a little bit different sound for my second guitar track, which to me, again, kind of gives your mix more life. It just, it just sounds really cool just to have that slight bit of difference in there. Now, of course, you could use another mic if you wanted to, if you had a different mic other than the SM57. Uh, you could use that for that second guitar track. If you only got one mic, like I'm using the one mic right now, you can just change the mic placement a little bit and that will be enough to give you a little bit different tone. Now I had this mic running directly into my interface, which is a PreSonus Quantum 2. And for, for recording real amps, I do use a compressor plugin for the real amp. And the reason I do that is because a real amp is gonna have some variances, you know, in, in the sound and the low points and high points. So you use a compressor to kind of even those out, to kind of bring up the low spots and, and tame the high spots, if that makes sense. So it just kind of helps to level things out. Now for post-processing, I often also use an EQ plugin on the guitar tracks recorded with a real amp as well. And that kind of helps smooth things out just a little more if I feel like I need it. Now call me old school or call me unscientific or whatever you want to call me. Uh, I truly do believe that some of the tone, maybe not a lot, but some of the tone or maybe the sound rather does come from the guitarist. It comes from the guitar player. I know there's been several uh, famous YouTubers to do videos like, well, it's, it's the same tone with different guitar players, but they really only give a snapshot of playing like minimal stuff on guitar. When you get into playing riffs and get into uh, just diving into playing more, then you start to hear those differences and those nuances between guitar players. So I do believe a lot of the sound, maybe not the tone, but the sound uh, does come from the guitarist's hands. That's just my personal opinion. And based on my experience as a musician as well. I've been playing guitar and playing with some type of band or group since about 1989, 1990. So I've been doing this for a little while, uh, long enough to have you know heard the difference between different guitar players you know, playing through the same equipment, whatever. So anyway, I don't really wanna go down that rabbit hole, but uh, again, I hope you can take my settings here that I gave you and um, you know mimic them and, and then kind of cater it to your liking my tone 
may not be the tone that you care for, but if you kind of start there, and again, they're simple, simple settings, it's a good place to start at least. And of course, you know, a lot of you guys have asked for this, so I wanted to give it to you. Now, real quick, again, don't forget you can get the PDF download. Uh, if you're already on my email list, okay, you already have that. I sent that to you, so you've got it. Uh, just look in the subject line for Metal Tone. Uh, email from Jason Stallworth. So you've got that there. If you're not on my email, then sign up. There is uh, there's a link in the YouTube description below. Uh, the first thing I send you is my free practice guide, my metal riffs and licks practice guide. You'll get that today. As soon as you sign up, I'll send that to you. Uh, and then the next day I send this free guide here. One more thing, if you've already got all of this, if you're on my email and you've got everything, but you're not in one of my guitar courses, uh, I've got links to those in the description as well. So definitely check those out. Guys, thank you for watching. Please give this video a like and make sure you're subscribed to my channel. I've got more awesome metal guitar content coming your way. A uh, lot more other content as well. Seven string, I'm going to be sharing more of my, my live acoustic gigs. So got a lot of stuff that I'm going to be bringing to you guys this year uh, in 2022 and the years to come as long as I'm alive. On that note, no pun intended, you know what to do until the next video. Keep it metal.